Hello, friends. Oh, how I wish we were together. Can you give me, can you give me an elbow? A pounded elbow? Or a virtual hug? I wish I could give you a real hug in person, but that's okay. Because today, we still get to talk about the Bible. I don't have Topher the Gopher with me today, but I do have another really fun helper. Do you want to meet him? Max, come. We have another fun Bible helper today. This is my dog, Max. <laughs> Can you say hi to Max? <laughs> He's a really fun dog. He's going to stand in for Topher the Gopher today. So, we are going to read our Bible story. Today's true Bible story is going to teach us that my church helps me and I help my church. We need our help order. Sit down, though. Max, lay down. Good boy. It's going to teach us that my church helps me and I help my church. That's our big idea for the day. Let's say it together. My church helps me and I help my church. It's true. My church helps me and I help my church. In fact, that's what our memory verse from the Bible tells us in Galatians 6 2. Let's, let's learn it together. Carry one another's heavy loads, for if you do, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6 2. Can we do that together again? Carry one another's burdens, like you're picking something up. Carry one another's burdens, for if you do, march in place, you will fulfill the law of Christ. I can cry now. Galatians 6 2. One more time. Carry one another's heavy loads, for if you do, you will fulfill the law of the law of Christ, Galatians 6, 2. Very good. Today's true Bible story is about some helpers who helped a man escape from some mean people. If you're ready to hear the story, wiggle your fingers in the air. Can you wiggle them in the air for me? Good job. Can you guys go grab your Bibles? Can you hold it in your hands and feel its pages? Can you hold it? What do we know about the Bible? We know that the Bible is true. Repeat these special words after me. It's true. It's true. The Bible is true. It's true. It's true. The Bible is true. Very good. Last week, Miss Grace told us the story of how Saul used to arrest Christians, but then Jesus appeared to him in a bright light, and something like scales fell from his eyes. This encounter with Jesus changed Saul's heart, and now Saul loved and followed Jesus. He was a completely different person, and his life looked very, very different. And instead of arresting Christians, he became a Christian. Praise God for that. And that is where we begin with our story today. Let's open up our Bibles and let's turn to Acts chapter 9. Can you turn there? Acts chapter 9, and we are going to be reading verses 19 through 25. Let's read these true and good words together. Starting in chapter 19, or verse 19 in chapter 9. For some days, he was with the disciples at Damascus, that's Saul. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. Can you march in place like you're Saul and say, He is the Son of God. Can you do that? He is the Son of God. Very good. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not the man? who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon his name? Can you make a surprised face and say, I can't believe it. Saul is following Jesus. Okay, surprised face. I can't believe it. Saul is following Jesus. And 
Has he not come here for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him, but his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. Now, can you pretend to be one of Saul's helpers and tie a rope around a basket? Okay, get your rope and pretend to tie it around the basket. Okay, good job. Now, pretend to lower that basket down. Down. Saul's in that basket and we're going to lower him down. Now, can you run in place and say, run away, Saul, run away. Okay, run in place. Run away, Saul, run away. Very good. Saul was able to escape because he had people to help him. And thanks to those helpers, Saul was able to escape and tell even more people about Jesus. Those helpers were so, so important. Jesus gave Saul helpers, and he gives you and I helpers too. Who are some helpers that Jesus gives us? Can you think of some? Let's see. The church. You see, the church isn't just a building. It's all of the people inside and outside of the building who love and follow Jesus, the church. What are some ways that you think the church helps you? Well, the people in our church can pray for you. They can ask God to help you. The people in our church can play with you. They can be your friends and love on you. The people in your church can share with you. They can help provide the things that you need. You see, Jesus gave us the church full of people to help us, but that's not all. Jesus wants you and I to be a helper too. You can pray for your church family and those who you want to become part of your church family. You can play with your church family love on them and encourage them, and you can share with people in your church family. The things that God has graciously given you, you can share with your church family. That's because your church helps you and you help your church. Can you say that again? Your church helps you and you help your church. What a privilege it is for us to be a part of a church family full of helpers. And that's because Jesus has helped and saved us. We can be helpers because Jesus is our ultimate helper. Now, this week, can you think of some people in our church that you could be a helper to? Maybe you could call one of your friends, FaceTime one of your friends, and ask how you can pray for them. Ask, call them and say, what do, what do you need? How can I help you? How can I go to God and ask him to provide for you? Ask him to care for you. Or maybe you can send a card to somebody in our church family and encourage them. I know that I love receiving such sweet encouragements from my friends and it helps me. It helps Encourage me and remind me that God cares for me as God's people care for me. Let's try and think of some encouraging ways we can be helpers this week. Can you do that? Tell your mom and dad or your family how you want to be a helper, and then let's go and be helpers. Let's say a prayer together and thank Jesus for giving us a church full of helpers. Will you repeat this prayer with me? Dear Jesus, Thank you for loving and helping me. Thank you for giving me a church family full of helpers. Help me to be a helper too. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. All right, friends. I miss you. Let's go be helpers this week. I love you.